So your managing partner, right. okay, so for the people that don't know, and I'm actually very excited because uh, I've always been curious of how does one become uh, a managing partner. So managing partner is basically the... Which version uh, would you like? Yes. <laughs> it's not that nobody else wanted the job. <laughs> there, goes, there goes that story. Right. Right. So managing partner is basically the president, okay, right. of uh, an accounting firm. Right. Okay? Or, you know, sometimes they use the same terminology for a law firm as well. Yeah. Like a right. service company. So, uh, um, so let's talk a little bit about that because the, I'm assuming there's you know, there's, a, a, you know, if you look at the structure of a typical accounting firm or law firm, you have an associate, then you have a partner, then you have a managing partner. Mm -hmm. And I'm skipping a whole bunch of things. Well, there's a layer in between the executive committee, which really is, in our case, three people which go kind of oversee the entire firm, which I work in terms of with the, with the executive committee. Okay. So how does one become a managing partner? Like I said, there's, there's a number of ways to do it. One is, the, one is to lose. The uh, vote. Uh, the other is, I guess, I don't want to say right place at the right time, but when we came into the firm in the late 90s uh, as partners, part of what we were dealing with was a transition that had to happen in order for the firm to continue going forward as the firm, without being sold, without having to be bought out by somebody. So um, there were a lot of changes that had to be made, and I guess, uh, as, as they like to joke, I came back from a, a business trip together as, and I, as the ringleader. Uh, kind of with a with a whole different set of demands of where I thought and we thought the group should, the firm should go over time. Uh, needless to say, it was not warmly received uh, in the first few years. It was really seen as a lot of uh, you know pushing back, a lot of uh, I guess some people would call sense of entitlement. And you know back then I don't think we had the same terminology we use today, but it's the same idea. Um, but I think the key ultimately at the end of the day was our goal as a young group of partners was to impress upon the rest of the partnership that our goals of driving the firm forward and growing the firm were in the best interest of the firm and not self-serving, even though by default they become self-serving if you move forward and grow. And there's a fine line at the end of the day between doing something for the sake of yourself or doing something for everybody that you benefit by. Okay, I mean, you, you can look at a, the hockey team, and I guess maybe the Habs is a really bad example oh, right now. <laughs> but, you know, you look at it and you say, okay, so the, the, if, if, a, if a player outperforms and the team loses, okay, it's not as nearly as valuable as if somebody's outperforming and the whole team wins. And, and if it's part of that driving the group forward. And, and I kind of emerged, I guess, from that group as the, as the ringleader and having taken the role or taken the objective of working with the managing partner at the time, Joe Marlowe, who I to this day said could have gone either way in liking me. He could have either kicked me out of my butt because I was a little too aggressive and a pain, or recognized that he had somebody else that wanted to try and move this room forward. That's essentially where we went. So we probably started in around 2002. By 2004, I took the role of managing partner, and have had it since then. Um, the first few years were not easy. Uh, we were battling generational differences. We were battling uh, a founding group of partners that really, at the end of the day, wanted the firm to go forward but didn't know anything else. So we were always a real pain in the butt and everything. I, 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 yeah. I think one of the one of the telling signs of what Mike is talking about transition is really we went almost overnight from the average age of the partner group that was at 57 and as I said, almost literally overnight, within a year or two, that average age of the partnership went to 46. That is a major culture change and shift in and of itself. Uh, and, it, and it really, it, if you don't make those changes, then you know, things will definitely not go in the right direction. So I just wanna say the, the age, the mentality, the culture was a very big factor in the change that Mike was referring to. Okay.